Discs have two components. There's a hard outer part and a soft inner part. The inner, if the outer part cracks, the inner part can come out. And that coming out of the inner part is called herniation, moving through. It's the soft inner part moving through the crack into the outer part. That's a herniated disc. Herniated discs have a long history. We've known about them literally since the Great Depression in the 20s. And they've, as a result, the language that's been used has changed over time. They've been called slipped discs. It's often referred to just as sciatica, herniated disc, annular tear with disc herniation. There's all kinds of, uh, of uh, jargon which comes for it, but it all refers to the same thing, which is a torn annulus with a soft nucleus, soft part of the disc coming through. The most important thing to realize when you think about treatment of a herniated disc is that the vast majority of them do not require any treatment. They get better on their own. The real number is around, as we have discussed previously, 85% within four weeks and 90% within 12 weeks. So the vast majority of herniated discs are going to get better on their own. Nothing that happens, nothing else needs to happen other than your body to cure a herniated disc in the vast majority of cases. A herniated disc is resolved by your body through the process of reabsorption and inflammation. Since the disc is foreign to your body, it doesn't have its own blood supply, when that soft disc material comes out, your body starts reacting to it like crazy. And your body has things called white cells, which literally absorb, uh, chew up, and, and remove foreign materials from the body. It's weird to talk about your disc as foreign because it's part of you, but to the rest of your body, it's foreign. And so your body, through that inflammatory process, removes it. Um, but that process takes time. and. Um, it's amazing. We can actually see on MRI the herniated disc material literally goes away over time as your body uh, reabsorbs it. Since most herniated discs are going to go away on their own, we usually don't think about surgery until you get to 12 weeks. And the reason is, in that, six, in that zero to 12 weeks, since 90 plus percent of them are going to heal up on their own, there's no point in thinking about surgery unless one of three things happen. First, if the disc herniation is so big that it's putting pressure on all the nerves, it can actually cause difficulty controlling your bowels and your bladder. So if that's happening, if it's one of these giant herniations, it's got to be removed, and the earlier the better. In fact, if you lose bladder control at any time, if you really can't urinate, it's kind of an emergency. We need to tackle that one right away. Second, if the herniated disc is causing so much numbness that being unable to feel a part of your body is interfering with every, the things you normally do every day, that's one that we would go earlier. And the reason is, go, go remove surgically earlier. And the reason is, if it's that um, severe, the longer it stays that way, the more likely it is to become permanent. Same thing with motor function. If a disc herniation is causing a foot drop or so much weakness that it, it's not just a little bit weak, but it really interferes with normal function, then it uh, needs to be removed. The third reason is if it's just too painful. Sometimes these things are so painful, you just literally can't live with it for 12 weeks or, or even one more day. And when that happens, when it's really that, the pain is that severe that it breaks through anti-inflammatories and rest and moist heat and, and all the proper care, then it's appropriate to move surgically to remove it.